Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of Watch Collection. Uh, today what I want to talk about is a Rimantois de Galité. Uh, this is a mechanism uh, that is, <laughs> for the, the, to get one, they're terribly expensive, they're, but they're fantastic. Uh, so, so let me talk about them and explain what they are. Useful information. You never know on date night, you know, you run out of things to talk about and you have something that, that that's in French, Rimantois de Galité. Look it up and the pronunciation, French pronunciation, it probably sounds a lot better. Anyway, let me explain what it is. Okay, uh, here you've got a typical uh, wheel train. Uh, at the top, you got the, uh, the barrel. The barrel provides the power, and then it goes through the train to the uh, center wheel, sometimes called the second wheel, then the third wheel, the fourth wheel, the escape wheel, and finally, uh, the balance wheel. And the balance wheel uh, goes through X number of semi-oscillations. I think about, God, boy, around 300 degrees, something like that. And those oscillations are timed so that the number of oscillations are regular and you can, by hooking them into the wheel train, each one of those wheels are, can be used to set a time, the minutes, the hours, and the uh, seconds. So let's take a look at this and to understand what it is. Now, the problem with using a, a spring, a mainspring in this case that's in the barrel, is that over time it slows down. At first it's really strong and then it goes down and it's sort of into a sort of what we'll call a, a sweet spot and it flattens out and then at the end it goes down. If you ever had a wind-up toy that's going around, it'll go zoom and then and then boom, 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 the end of it. Okay, this has been a problem uh, for uh, mechanical watches forever. And uh, even uh, Abraham Breguet saw this as a problem and to do something about it. And one thing was to to, to create a Remontois de Galité. Now, essentially, basically what this means, a Remontois, to rewind so you have equal force. That's essentially what it is. And uh, I set up something that's sort of it. I I got to tell you, I went, the more I went through this, the more <laughs> I thought, oh my God, I could spend a lot of time trying to figure out the best way to do this. And quite frankly, I don't know what the best way is. I do know some ways. I do know uh, some of the people have been working on it. I've met some of them. Uh, and I'm, it's very impressive. So here's essentially what you have. You got the power coming down from the, from the barrel, okay? That goes right through the wheel trim. And then you got the escapement. But the as we know, is that the torque coming down is decreasing as the, the spring expands. Okay, so the idea is, is they're going to stick a little other spring in there that will be constantly rewound. Now, the spring that is going to be rewound to be used as the uh, torque for the, uh, for the uh, kicking the the balance wheel back and forth is and releasing things on time is going to be regularly rewound so that the the uh, mainspring rather than using the mainspring as the power for timing it's used to rewind the remontoir okay I, I know this sounds sort of weird, the way I set it up. In fact, the, the first time I, I uh, earlier when I, when I was looking at that, well, maybe I'll just put in two barrels, one to wind up the rim and the other one to, and it wasn't that easy. So 
I just sort of, uh, the illustration really, just sort of to give you an idea of the sense of it, you, the, you want the balance wheel uh, separated from the mainspring, but the mainspring is necessary to wind a rim and toit, all right? So you have to have some mechanism that'll rewind a rim and toit, which is a, works like a mainspring with an escapement, except in a different way, uh, because it's rewound and then out again. So let's take a look at some that have been done, and there, there aren't that many, and the ones that are out there are very expensive, <laughs> right? So that's, I, I know that's not much a help for you. Now, the, there's the, the idea of a rim and toit. There are a lot of different kinds of springs. See, the first one in the upper left there is by F.P. Jorn. It's a rim and toit using what's called a blade spring. And a blade spring is pretty much you, it, 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 it pushes. Uh, and you have some kind of, there are different ways, and then it'll push back, and that will work ha with the same kind of power you get from a spring that unwinds. It's a different kind of generating power, but it's on, based really on the same concept. So that was one thing. And, and again, I don't go into detail there because it is whoop, <laughs> a little over my head. Another one, and this is uh, one that I've seen, uh, Rolf Lang is a famous um, watchmaker, English watchmaker, and it was John Harrison. And there was a big competition that they had for a, an accurate chronometer for navigation. Uh, latitude, they could figure out latitude, but it was longitude that they had the problem with and they needed a chronometer to do it. So they had this contest and a big prize for it. And the one that won was was uh, Harrison. I think it was called the H4, H2, one of those. Anyway, Rolf Lang, uh, who is a, a German watchmaker, uh, made one called the Golden H uh, Marine Chronometer. Okay, this is uh, Harrison's with Harrison's rim and toit. There's a picture of it up there in the lower right, and you can see on the top there's a there's the uh, the hairspring that's used to turn the the balance wheel. But below there, there is on the bottom part it's a there's a rim and toit that regulates the timing of it. So it's 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 really it's a, it's a million dollar watch, but that's okay. It's more it's a pretty good size one. I I visited Rolf uh, back in 2019 at his uh, place in Dresden and saw it. It's really amazing. His son Marco Lang also makes incredible watches. He founded Lang and Heim uh, and was with him for about 18 years. And one of the watches he made, they discontinued. It was also a rim and toit that they had at Langenheim. Uh, Langenheim now has one called the Frederick II uh, with a rim and toit that from, I don't know whether it was the same one Marco had or a different one they made. Now, there's a Langa and Sunda have uh, some rim and toits. One of them they have, uh, they have it in a uh, Zeitwerk date rim and toit. Um, and it's, you can see, in the, it's on the lower left uh, quadrant there in the, in the picture. And you can see just a little part of the uh, balance wheel. But notice it's over to the right of the balance wheel. The arrow is pointing to, to the major feature of it. And then finally, um, the bottom right, now, and by the way, too, there are other really great watchmakers who have made a rim and toit, but I, this was just to be an introduction to it, to really try to get some sense. The, the thing that I really enjoyed <laughs> was try to figure it out. When I looked at the, when I had those uh, two uh, wheel trains next to each other, one with a rim and toit, they kept saying, well, how am I going to use the power from the main frame, the main spring, to power the rim and toit, plus to do all of this other stuff. 
Uh, I didn't come up with a solution, <laughs> but I'm thinking about it. Now, another one, a brilliant one, this is by Andrea Streller. Uh, the escapement is called The Escapement with a patented rim, uh, Rimantois Galate. Uh, this picture is from uh, the uh, Andrea Streller site. And there's a what's called the Sauterelle, which means grasshopper. And this is a Sauterelle movement, has this incredible <laughs> looking thing that works as a rim and toit. Like I said, there are a lot of different ones that they have. Now, the final one I want to talk about is was, the last few years, this was done by a watchmaker named Luca Soprana. Uh, and it was based on a Derek Pratt uh, rim and toit. Derek Pratt was a brilliant guy. He worked with um, Urban Jurgensen for years. In fact, I'm wearing my Urban Jurgensen uh, in honor of Derek Pratt today. Uh, and the one that he had was the one that Derek Pratt designed, but Luca Soprana implemented. And the what it has, it's got a little remontoise spring right connected up, uh, right beneath the uh, uh, the escape wheel, okay? And then there's this two-pronged fork, and in the middle that goes around is this thing called um, Rulex Triangle. It reminds me, I used to have a car with a Vonkel engine, a rotary engine, and this thing looks <laughs> exactly like the rotor that was in my my car. It's not. It's, it's just it's just a it's well a relaxed triangle that you can do things with for in a certain sequence. And so they use this uh, in this where they have the two prong fork and then inside of the two prong fork, and that will tilt the the I guess what you'd call it, the fork that releases and stops the escape wheel. Okay, <laughs> this is these are things, but of all of the of all of the mechanisms with a traditional mechanical watch, this is one to know about or to think about. Um, like I said, it it works so well. This is the this is the thing about it. It's not one of these things that doesn't work, or you sort of you know put in a battery for it or silicon or something like that. This works with traditional materials, and uh, to me, it's fascinating. And I can't afford one, unfortunately. We'll see what happens in the future, though. <laughs> Maybe something grand will come along. Anyway, let me know what you think about it. By the way, there's this fantastic article in Revolution Magazine on uh, Remontois de Alte. Uh, you can Google it and find it. Just put in um, Revolution <laughs> and then put Remontois de Alte. And Revolution Magazine has a great article on that. Anyway, let me know what you think. Uh, it's an opportunity to subscribe if you like. Until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Sci, the art and science of Watts Collection. Thank you.